So when I was coming up with this topic, uh, I was asking my parents, well, what should I, what should I do it on? And Eric decided, well, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be around the first of the year, so do something related to New Year's resolutions. It's like I don't want to be that cliche, though. <laughs> so, but last year around this time, a little bit later in the year, um, I I made a goal that that um, really kind of saved me from a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of struggle. So this it really is important to me with the goal setting, as I found out. But what is goal setting? I would like to define it as this: a decision made in advance on the base based on a value. A motivational speaker by the name of Zig Ziglar had a fantastic illustration on goal setting. Uh, he took a wheel from a wagon and took each one of the spokes and labeled it with an area of your life, a major area of your life that you should set goals in. And those were career, financial, spiritual, physical, intellectual, family, and social. Zig Ziglar suggested that uh, you should have a goal and set in each area because if you don't, your wheel is going to be flat. It's going to be a very bumpy ride. One of my favorite quotes from him is, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. <laughs> if you do not set a goal for yourself, you aim at nothing, you will not achieve much as, you, as much as you could. You wouldn't be able to unlock your full potential. Proverbs sums it up quite well as he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. I would say goals are a pretty important thing, wouldn't you? Now, what makes an effective goal? For me, there were three main things that made an effective goal. One is that is it measurable? If I can't see any improvement or that anything has changed, I would give, I would get discouraged and not have the motivation to complete my goal. And the second is worthwhile, which we'll unpack in just a little bit. Then three was to surround myself with positive influences. Doing so will motivate you and encourage you to achieve your goal. Therefore, we could conclude that pursuing a worthwhile goal will help unlock your potential for God. One biblical story which really comes out to me that has these three key elements is Daniel. Daniel. Now, let me give you a quick, quick backstory on Daniel. He was taken away from his home country of Judah, made a eunuch, and informed that he was going to serve the king of Nebuchadnezzar for the majority of or the rest of his life, as far as he knew. He then finds himself with his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the palace of King Nebuchadnezzar, where food is set before him from the king's table. We pick up in verse 1 and 8 of Daniel, but Daniel uh, pursued in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which the king drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Note something here. The phrase proposed in his heart, that, that is a goal-setting phrase. Daniel set a goal to be faithful to God, not by eating the unclean meats and drinking the wine at the king's table. This goal fits two of those spokes that we mentioned earlier, both the spiritual as well as the physical. Now, Daniel has set a goal 
Earlier we said that there are three key things that make up an effective board. The first of which is whether or not it is measurable. And Daniel makes the goal measurable in verse 11 to 15. Then Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over him, Hananiah, Malachi, and Azariah, test your servants for ten days, and let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youth who eat the king's food observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to him in this manner and tested him for ten days. At the end of the ten days, it was seen that all, that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youth that ate for the king's food. First, Daniel um, asked to be tested. And the way that they would be measured in this test was by their appearance, uh, which gave a measure to the success. And they also gave it a time limit. It was time sensitive, just 10 days. So we made people measurable. So, but is it worthwhile? If we go back to verse 8, it says not to defile himself. That implies that there is a spiritual issue going on as well. But what is the spiritual issue? Ellen, Ellen G. White, the prominent writer in the Adventist church, said this in Prophets and Kings. A portion having been offered to idols, the food from the king's table was consecrated to idolatry, and one partaking of it would be regarded as offering homage to God's Babylon. So, from there, I like to our scripture reading from today, John 6, 27, says, Do not labor for food which perishes, but for food which endures for everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give to you, because God the Father has sent his seal upon him. And that's from the New King James reading. In other words, do not put time, money, and effort into something that is only going to perish on this earth. But instead, put your energy into something that you can take with you or into the people around you witnessing to them. Now, what made Daniel's goal worthwhile was the reason, let's see, Daniel did not want to defile himself because it was a spiritual issue. Daniel was striving to be faithful to God in all things. And God blessed him. God never asks us to compromise so that we can be greater witnesses to ourselves. He asks us to be faithful so that he can give us an even greater witness. Any area of our lives which we choose to be faithful in, God will bless us and will increase us in influence so that we can be witnesses for Him. God blessed Daniel and his three friends in many ways, including giving them learning and skill in literature and wisdom. Daniel had understanding of visions and dreams. The king found that there were that they were ten times wiser than magicians and enchanters, which can be found in Daniel 1, verses 17 and 20. Daniel 
Now, moving to the last, surrounding yourself with positive influences. Was Daniel alone when he was in Babylon, at least during the first several years of his life? No, he was not. He had Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And we can, let's see, and this, this is really, for his goal setting portion of this, this is really noticed in Daniel verses 11 and 12. Uh, when it says that test your servants, servants being plural, Daniel surrounded himself with friends that have a positive influence. And it's also, they stood with Daniel as well. Later in the book of Daniel, they also prayed together. When Daniel was going to, before Daniel was going to interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. We can do the same thing in our lives, surrounding ourselves with positive influences. In fact, Proverbs 27, 17 says, uh, as iron shapes iron, so a man shapes the countenance of his friend. That's one of the best things about a church family, is that we help one another by being a positive influence, encouraging one another. Now, I said earlier this year that I had a, uh, that I was setting a goal myself, and that, that goal that I had was to take every opportunity that I had during the summer to work and earn money, and so I did, and I was saving that money. I also decided to tithe as a result. And I talked to successful people around me about saving money habits. And I also listened to podcasts and other, other outlets, read, read books, got to know as much as I could about habits that I could create for myself about saving. So I worked that last summer and earned as much money as I could. And little did I know, in September, right before school started, that I would get into a nasty car wreck. And my vehicle at that point in time was totaled. And uh, it, was, it was a little bit discouraging. So I decided then that we're going to, I'm trying to sell the, ve the vehicle that I had, my Ford Bronco, and I was then going to get another vehicle. So I sold the Bronco and got uh, some money for it. And I thought up on Craigslist, and the guy contacted me. He said he had a Millie's Jeep. He wanted to put the drivetrain into it. I said, "Okay, sure." So sold it. I then picked up a new newer car, a 2002 Subaru Outback, which promptly blew a head gasket on me two weeks after I bought it. <clears throat> And so I was getting really discouraged at this point because all of my summer savings now dwindling away for me to try and get transportation. So then I go ahead and started fixing the head gasket on this um, Subaru. And it's taken all my summer savings away. But if I had not made that goal beginning of the year and not tithe, I am pretty sure that I'd be in a very worse situation than I would be right now. We can unlock our full potential with God and for God. Goals are important, especially with our walk with God. There are three, three again, three points that I found to are really effective for that. And that is, for it to be measurable, well, goals are important, for it to be measurable, to evaluate if it is worthwhile, is it going to help me in the long run? And for me, in my case, for the goal that I set up, 
for not letting any opportunity slip by was so that, for one, God would use me with my tithe money, as well as it would build my character in the saving portion. And then the last is to surround yourself with positive influences. I know that if my parents weren't there encouraging me, my friends weren't there encouraging me, I probably would have given up on this Subaru that I have that I've been working on and trying to fix up a long time ago. Therefore, we can conclude that pursuing a worthwhile goal will help unlock people's potential for God. And I'd like to leave you with this quote. Where you are today is the sum of every choice you've ever made. If you don't like where you are, start making different choices. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for everything you do for us. I ask you to please be with us, Lord, and help us in this new year in making goals and then trying to accomplish those goals, Lord. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. I ask you for safe travels for everyone as we leave this place, Lord, and uh, for those who are not here, Lord, I ask you to be with them. Thank you so much for everything you've done in my life and everybody's life is here today, Lord. In the precious and holy name, amen.